getting better about that timing of that video and that music. How's everybody doing today? Well, welcome to the show. We are live. I am super excited today because we have a special guest on today's show. I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, and today is the day we're going to have Kenya Kelly on the show today, and we're going to be talking about vertical video and why you need a vertical video strategy, a short video strategy, all these things we're going to be talking about today. So she is a vertical video expert and she is a marketing expert. Now it's funny because I first met Kenya Kelly a couple years ago. I watched her speak at social media marketing world and it was kind of all like, she was this like TikTok sensation and she was all about vertical video. And then the more I learned about her, she's not just all about vertical video. This girl is a marketing genius. So she's got all kinds of things to help you with your business, help you with your channel, help you with your social media. But today, specifically, we're going to be talking about short video strategies. So I'm actually going to bring Kenya on here in just a moment. But first, I got to check in on the comments. Everybody is here. Are you excited about Kenya Kelly coming on the show? And if you don't know Kenya, you're going to know her after today for sure. And you're going to need to make sure that you subscribe to her channels because I've been learning a ton from her, especially lately. She's been putting all kinds of content out there. She's got so many great free resources. We will definitely share those with you here later in the show. So make sure you stick around for that. And you are going to get to ask your questions today as well. So Kenya, I'm going to bring you up, girlfriend, if you are ready to go. So I'm going to have her come up to the stage. Hello. Hey, hey, girl, hey. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? You look great. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm here on stream here. I said, let me do a little, little pink, a little something, you know, in case somebody's <laughs> single out there. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, obviously, I briefly talked about you uh, in the as I was kind of welcoming everyone to the show. But why don't you do a quick favor and just give us a nice little background? Tell us who you are. Tell us how you got started doing this. And uh, we're going to learn more from you here in a minute. But just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. So hello, everyone. So I'm Kia Kelly. Uh, so basically, like, you know, even though I, people know me because I teach TikTok, I'm not like a 20 year old person. I'm literally turning 43 uh, this year. And so I literally got my start with uh, video marketing back in 2016. So I've always been an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit. Like that's me back there at 20, 21 years old, talking to 12,000 people on stage. So I've been doing speaking and all that for many years. But in 2016, I saw people on the app called Periscope. I was very new to it, but I was watching people make money online. And at the time I was working for Sprint on the corporate side, but I had known ways that you can make so much money um, and have time freedom and not on the job. And so I literally jumped on Periscope in 2016 just not knowing what was going on, teaching what I already knew from my previous jobs. And I literally got my start teaching personal branding and brand design. And we did that for years until 2020. Now, the I'm, I'm somebody who prays and I pray for creative strategies. And so 
at the beginning of 2020, I was praying because, you know, we knew something was happening in the world. And I was just praying. I just heard God tell me to get on TikTok. And it was the craziest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But I did. And that's pretty much how I got started. <laughs> okay. I love it. So you prayed and God said TikTok. I love it. Yes. But crazy. you, yeah. And, and I think I was reading that in just three years, you've grown an audience of over half a million people mm -hmm. and made over a million dollars. So that's yeah. fantastic. It's now so, I mean, two million. It's crazy. Oh, well, look at that. I love yeah. it. That's fantastic. Wild. Congratulations. That Thank is, you. that is phenomenal. And like I said, I think, like I said, I kind of learned about you in, you know, you came into my world because of TikTok and because of Ooh. what you were teaching about TikTok. But then the more I started kind of paying attention to you and learning from you, you got you have so much more to offer. So I love that you have this kind of fun, niche little thing that you got into that kind of gave you this this yeah. kind of, you know, jump start. But there's so much more to Kenya than TikTok. I can tell you all right that right now. So I love it. Awesome. So today we are going to talk about um, you know, short videos and short video strategies. So, and I, we got some great people here in the comments. We've got Marianne who's watching from Sydney, Australia. It's 2 a.m. her time. So wow. shout out to Marianne. <laughs> she tunes into the show sometimes. So it's great to see you. We got Mona B here as well. And then Creator Classroom, she is uh, definitely always on the show as well. So she's, she's a Canva expert actually. Yeah, so yeah. Maurice is here from Texas. We got Oh my gosh, we got all kinds of people in the house here today. So this is going to be a great show. I am super stoked for you to start talking about it. But before we, before you start talking about the strategy piece, mm -hmm. Kenya, I would like for you to just make sure we're all on the same page, everyone's level set. So when you say vertical, or I'm, I'm sorry, short video, help us understand what you mean by short video so that everybody kind of knows what we're about to talk about, because you are going to tell us why we need that strategy. But mm -hmm. first, just let us know exactly what short video is in your mind. For sure. So kind of what we're doing right now, this is considered more long form video. Like we've already been live here for five minutes. This is considered long. Um, short video by definition is a video that is one minute or less. OK, it doesn't mean it's a video that is seven seconds, 15 seconds. It's literally a video that is one minute or less. Love it. OK, cool. So now let's talk about strategy. So mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know you're going to probably tell us some success stories and all these things to get us all yeah. fired up about why we would need this. So why don't you just let us know? I mean, you're here to talk about a short video strategy. So why why does everybody need to be considering this in their video strategy or business strategy? Right. Because we're sure. talking about companies. We're talking about streamers because I mean, we our audience is full of businesses, nonprofits, YouTubers, you know, people mm -hmm. that are entrepreneurs, people that are, you know, just hobbyists that are trying to make a business out of their hobbies. So it this applies to everybody. So I know that you feel pretty, pretty strongly about that. So why don't you talk to us about why we need this, this uh, short video strategy? For sure. So there's like, there's a lot of reasons why you should do this. And I'll try to like, just slow my brain down. Um, so anytime I do a presentation, I always like do this like countdown because according to statistics and data right now that the average attention span of a person is eight seconds. Okay. Eight. That means that most of you that are watching me right now, you're thinking about other things, you're doing other things, you're multitasking, all the things. Like if you agree that you're watching us or listening and you're doing other things, just type me in the chat. Okay. And so because of that, with the attention span of people, when it comes to marketing, like we, we have to remember that if our audience, like forget what we're talking about, but if our audience is telling us that I'm multitasking, I'm doing multiple things, then we have got to learn how to reach them, how to market to them while we've got them. Okay. And so one of the things about short video is short video is, um, it is capturing a person's attention and keeping them there for a short period of time. Right. It takes a lot of skill and all that to keep people for a longer video. So that's the first reason, because the attention span of a person is just extremely short. Uh, the second reason is because we are typically walking around with our phones everywhere that we go. OK, whether my phone is in my hand or it's in my watch, you know, it is everywhere. Right. And all of our phones are for the most part. I mean, they're vertical. They're like they're they're set up in our hands to fit our hands, and they are vertical. And so, when we look at typical long form video, long form is typically horizontal, which I love. But right now, we are trained to look at everything vertically in our hands. Okay. Um, and so, when you're looking at the fact that people are on their phones everywhere that they go, that means that sometimes 
you can get people for just a short period of time and get them to do something. I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, but a lot of us, we wake up in the mornings and we check our phones and we're like, we know we got to get up out of that bed to get going to what we got to do. So we've got people for a short period of time. You know, when we're sitting down having our breakfast, having our lunch or our dinner, we're going to be there for not a whole long time. And a lot of people spend their time on their phones. Sounds kind of crazy. But when we go to the restroom in the morning, afternoon, evening, oftentimes we take our phones with us. Why? Because you know, kind of like, remember that, that, that Snickers commercial, not go anywhere for a while, grab a Snickers. And so instead of us grabbing Snickers, we grab our phones, you know? And so if you know that that is your own behavior, that is your audience's behavior, then our job is to go, okay, how do I get my audience's attention and keep my audience's attention? And one of the ways that is, is short video. Now, another reason is because like, the number one way that a lot of us are being entertained these days has been social media. Yes, we all like White Lotus and Bridgerton and whatever else, or like Melanie's watching, you know, she loves golf. You know, yes, we love watching the things that we love to watch. I am multitasking. <laughs> or whatever, you know what I mean? But there's also like, um, there's, this, this, there's this creative way to market to an audience of people um, through short form video. So let's just say that you are someone and you have a YouTube channel or you have a podcast. Your focus is how do I get more people to listen or watch this, right? And yes, you can definitely have your podcast on all the podcast players. You can have your YouTube channel doing what it's doing. But what we have learned about short video is that for example, let's just say you are you do a video podcast. If you are already filming that video for YouTube, you can literally chop up some of the hottest moments in that video, that long form video, turn it vertical and drive traffic to your channel. For example, I watched someone on TikTok who was already trying to grow his YouTube channel and his podcast. He took a really hot clip of one of his shows and he didn't give you the ending or the beginning. You just got right in the middle and what you wanted, you were like, oh my God, I want more, right? And in order to get the more, he said, come find me on YouTube. Well, his TikTok account went from like, I think it was like zero followers to like 44,000 in a matter of weeks and it skyrocketed his YouTube channel. Then I watched some other people who I think it's like there's some TV radio show where they find cheaters or something like that. I can't remember. And they uh, they do these little hot clips of their, you know, of their interviews with people on radio to get you hooked into the storyline. And like if you want more, you've got to go over to YouTube. So if you're on Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts or TikTok or whatever shorts that you're on, it's this really creative, strategic opportunity to create short bite-sized pieces of content and drive them to where you want them to. So like for me, I've been, I've been teaching online forever, but it wasn't until I started creating short video that people knew who I was. Mm, okay. I love this. Okay. So I love how, so obviously you said you gave us the reasons why the short videos work and the ver mm -hmm. vertical videos, you know, short attention spans, mm -hmm. people are on their phone. So that vertical format's kind of just perfect for it. Right. <laughs> But then you also are sitting here talking about, so you're now you're talking about this driving traffic to certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So getting that, the short form video, you talked about repurposing, which I'm totally going to make you break that down here in just a moment. So heads up. <laughs> um, but like, I, I, I say this all the time. I think that, you know, like, like you said, we're here live, we're having a conversation and people create videos and they're going live and they're, they're doing stuff. But sometimes I, I'm always trying to explain to people. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I, I love being able to come on here and talk about more than just live video because live mm -hmm. video is just one piece of the puzzle. And unless you have some sort of direction that you're trying to drive people in, mm -hmm. they're just going to hang out with you all the time. You know what I mean? It's kind of right. like, kind of like, you know, dating somebody and keeping them in the friend zone all the time. Right. So, you know, it, I definitely think that this is really important for people to understand that these short videos are just like, like you said, a teaser. It's almost like you're giving somebody, you're wetting their appetite to the point where they say, oh my gosh, I, I want more. Who is this person? Exactly. I need to learn more about them. Because isn't it true, Kenya, that the short form videos are, are really key for like organic reach? Like mm -hmm. they are, they're getting their, they're spread out there. They're getting shared. They're getting, you know, so people are going to maybe more organically find you. They may know nothing about you, but they find these short videos that you're creating. But then what you're saying is make sure you have somewhere else for them to go 
mm-hmm. to get more, right? And yeah. so whether that's, you know, a freebie or a website or your channel mm-hmm. itself where, where the long form content is too. So yeah. I love that you I, I also pointed use, that out. Um, mm-hmm. You mentioned about like organic. I also mm-hmm. like when we run ads, mm-hmm. we always test our videos on short form video first. Mm-hmm. So we put them all out, we put a bunch of them out there first. And then whichever one performs the best, we recreate it and then we run that as an ad. Oh, see that? That's gold right there. I hope everybody, mm-hmm. if, if you were multitasking as we all admitted <laughs> basically that we were, except for Creator Classroom, she said, I'm focused. Um, if you're multitasking, definitely hear what Kenya just said. She said that she's using these shorts, these short form videos as really beta testers to see mm-hmm. which ads are going to work. Mm-hmm. That is key. You're saving money by doing that. So that's actually, I love that. I've not heard that before. So that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's an, another just bonus. So before you go on further with what um, you, you know, you were going to be keep going talking about, you mentioned repurposing. So the repurposing aspect of, you know, taking something that's maybe longer form, like a, like a video podcast, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. or even this interview right here, right? So if you have one of those nuggets of gold, like that moment where you talked about <laughs> using the, the short mm-hmm. form videos as, as beta testers for ads, we could easily grab that. In fact, even StreamYard makes it super easy to do that inside the studio. We could grab that little clip that you talked about and then use it as one of these teasers. Mm -hmm. Can you just like, how does, should somebody think about their long form content and always be thinking about, okay, making sure I've got some segments in here that I'm going to intentionally repurpose. I mean, don't you think that that would be a pretty smart way for somebody who's already creating long form content to start Mm -hmm. to think about how can I, you know, approach this video with knowing I'm going to pull some of this stuff out. Do you, do you have like a workflow or do you have a thought process around how to make that kind of streamline? Cause one of the complaints I hear from people is, they say repurposing is a lot of work because they got to go mm-hmm. back and find those nuggets, find those short mm-hmm. clips. But if they go about it, maybe thinking about it, then it might be easier for them. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I would definitely say that one of the one of the strategic things you can do, especially if it's not a live stream, but this is live. So it's less less like ability to like edit as you guys can see me right now. But if you are pre-recording something and before you putting it up, before you edit it, like if you plan it in advance in terms of like, I'm not saying you got to script your entire video, but if you know that you're going to talk about these particular points or what have you, then you sh- you know that like, okay, after I talk about this, let me pause, right? And that way you're, you're already like, when, you, when it's time to edit you or your editor, you know when she's pausing or he's pausing is because they've said whatever the point is, catch that, you know? Um, I know me personally, when I use tools like AI tools where I will plug in my long form videos, I know that when I am talking and I'm getting ready to hit my next point, don't go to the next point, just stop because we're going to edit the video, but then I can just take the video and upload it into AI. And what I've experienced is that AI is it's catching it a lot easier than I can, than long, watching a really long video if I just put it up into the AI tool, it will catch that for us. But let's just say you don't want to use the AI tool. If you if you're having your bullet points out before you you know film your video, you already know. I talked about money here. I talked about this here, and what have you. And then once you get off of your video, now you can make the points of go back to this point. I talked about that and turn it into a short. Yes. Okay. So we've got some spammers hitting us up today. So. <laughs> I'm going to be paying attention to those comments, making sure that I can get those. This happened one time, like, I don't know, a few weeks ago where like all of a sudden it was like one after the other. So hopefully Mm -hmm. we'll, there's another one. I'm getting them. One thing I love about StreamYard is I can do it right from inside the studio, but I did reach out to my friends over on the StreamYard team, ask for a little backup. So, Mm -hmm. okay. I love that because I do think people get, they get intimidated by repurposing, but you got to do it. It's got to be part of your strategy. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, I think that It's not enough just to show up. I say that all the time. And so one of the things I love and one of the reasons why I liked this topic to bring you on was because I do think that once somebody gets into the flow of creating these shorts and getting into the rhythm of it, Mm -hmm. then you see these results. And all of a sudden that kind of inspires you to to keep going and doing that. I did want to pull up a comment. Coastal Diva said, whenever I want a creator confidence boost, a shorts is usually does it for me. So instant satisfaction because of the views or the other goodie, LOL. So mm-hmm. I do think that like people do want, you mentioned a short attention spans. Mm-hmm. And then I also think that sometimes it's like, like you said, it's just, just enough for them. Just give them a little bit. Mm-hmm. How do you, do you, do you think that there's a really, I mean, I see some of these short videos where people are um, changing the shorts almost to be entertaining. And then you go to their channel and that's not really what their channel is about. So 
when it comes to shorts, do you feel – what are your thoughts on the way somebody's going to create something to, you know, to be entertaining out there versus – what they're really like on their actual in their actual content because I, I see I see some people do it really smoothly and then I'm seeing this thing where you're like it feels like a bait and switch a little bit. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? While I take yeah. care of the scanners. So my thought is that I, me personally, I am all about be who you are at all times mm-hmm. um, because I never want somebody to feel like you're not who I thought you were. You know, it's kind of like when you meet somebody online, you meet them in person, they're totally different. Nobody really enjoys, you know, that you feel like you're being taken advantage of or being baited or whatever. Uh, Now, at the same time, like I can be very goofy um, on in my shorts or what have you. But typically when you come to my channel, I'm not as goofy because I am teaching, you know, now, you know, and I'm not like super serious or what have you, but it's kind of like in this moment of us talking right now, I'm not super goofy because we're talking, we're teaching. There's no reason for me to kind of be goofy. Um, But my personal opinion is, is that be who you are everywhere and don't give it because if people are feeling like they can't trust you because of how you showed up one way and then another they're not going to trust you. And it's and you're not going to get your desired result. Mm-hmm. I agree. I definitely think that it's important to be authentic no matter what. I have seen some people create a separate channel for a different style of shorts. Oh, yeah. A different style of stuff. And so maybe that's one thing to do, too. But like, yeah, I mm-hmm. totally agree. It's very important to be yourself at all times. I, I agree. And there, yep. there's somebody for, for everybody. So, OK, mm-hmm. we, we have backup in the studio. Joanne, thank okay. you for showing up. So Joanne's here helping us out in the backup. It's going to be one of those days. OK, so Kenya, let's keep going. And I do see that we do have a question from um, Stephen. So we'll get to that in a second. Okay. But then Creator Classroom did have a – I got to scroll up and find that. She said something. It was a clarification thing. Do, 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 do. Here, oh, here we go. Let's see. I just had it. One sec. You know, I know uh, it's going to be tricky. Do me a favor. Creator Classroom, post that one – actually, number one. I got it right here. Nope, it's gone. Creator Classroom, post your question again. You had a clarifying question. But, Kenya, real quick, let's get this question from Steven. He says, I've been using Streamer for vertical live streams for the short shelf. What are your thoughts for the replay of the vertical live stream when it comes to those watching it on mobile phones? Mm, what are your thoughts for the replay for the vertical live stream when it comes to those watching it on mobile phones? I don't know. I, I don't think I've had a lot of experience with... Um, checking to see how people are responding to the vertical replays. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I do use, when I, when I go live, I will stream to all the platforms vertically. Um, But you know what? I have not really been looking at that. So I'm not sure um, Mm -hmm. how people are experiencing it or like, or what the benefit is. Like Because for me nowadays, when I'm finished with my stream, I'm I'm typically just finished with the stream because nobody's there anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. And I think you guys banned the creator classroom accidentally. I think so too. (laughs) I think so too. So here, I think that like the whole vertical streaming is still pretty new. I mean, it's only been really, it's not even been two months, has it? I mean, it's maybe been maybe, maybe three months tops. But so I do think the vertical streaming thing is definitely so new. So Mm -hmm. Steven, it's a great question. But I think that like what, you know, what Kenya was talking about earlier is sometimes you just have to try things and test it and see, but pay attention to those analytics so you know what's happening. Um, And I definitely think that um, when it comes to replays, if you're going to go and create something and you're going to do a vertical stream, for example, Mm -hmm. you have to do it with intention, 100%. You have to understand that there's a, a particular type of stream that you're creating. You are limiting certain things you can do, certain experiences you can create. Just, mm-hmm. just like with when you go with a full landscape stream, which we love. I mean, I love a good full screen stream, but you also know that some people are just going to want to watch on their phone and it Correct. may not be as engaging for them or as as exciting for them when it's this little, you know, little box instead of the full phone view. So yeah. there's always a give and take with all of it. Um, with that being said, Kenya, so with that give and take and you, you know, have these types of streams and then you have vertical streams. Yeah. I'm all about, you know, creating efficiencies for people. But at the same time, what are your thoughts on doing both? So, for example, maybe on Monday, your stream is all about this wide format, uh, mm-hmm. you know, type of stream. But then maybe Tuesday or whatever or later the same day, it's the exact same content just different, a little different and done in that vertical format on Instagram or in the YouTube vertical stream feed. Have you thought about doing things like that, testing the, the waters of of the vertical video versus the landscape? That is totally off topic of what we're talking about, but I'm so <laughs> right. curious what, you, what, what your thoughts are on that. 
Yeah. So I've, I've kind of gone back and forth. I haven't been very like one day this, one day that, but I have done what I, what I have experienced so far is I get people to stay on longer when I am vertical on TikTok and I'm vertical on Instagram because they are so used to everything filling up the phone. Um, and so my experience so far has been when I just shifted over to all vertical, people are watching me a lot more, but I need to go and test. What does that look like for YouTube? Because I know YouTube has vertical streaming and that's super new for YouTube to have vertical streaming. Uh, Cause they go, I think it goes to the short feed. I think, um, I don't know. I don't like, it's like, it's like a, it's like a catch 22, you know, you're yeah. like, you want to be able to do them both. But for me, I think that my my main focus is like, let me do everything vertical because mm -hmm. everybody's on their phones and they're so used to being on their phones. And there's that like in a picture in picture type thing now where I don't know if this is actually on StreamYard, but like I know on TikTok that like you can stream and then people can click picture in picture and the stream can be in the corner and they can still scroll. So but you can't do that as much if your video is is full screen. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I think I know that that is um, that's more in the app itself, but also on phones like, you know, because you could be watching something and somebody can move the move the little video out and they can be texting or whatever, which yeah. some some of our viewers are doing right now, probably because they all admitted they were multitasking. So <laughs> right. some of them, some of them probably have us on that little window on their phone and they're yeah, doing something exactly. else. Um, so Marianne says, I tried vertical live last week using StreamYard on both YouTube and Instagram. So yeah. And I noticed, I saw that you were using the vertical stream on mm -hmm. Your in your channels, I did notice that a few weeks ago yeah. when some of this kind of was unlocked a little bit. And so, I mean, that's probably pretty exciting for you that you can now kind of do the live vertical using the StreamYard Studio because you can do things like oh. display comments and put banners up and do other cool things. So definitely one of the, the beautiful things I think about using a tool like StreamYard is you can really stand out from everybody mm -hmm. else because you can do all these other things. So cool. Cause I love being able to just go live. Cause now I can go live everywhere. Like I'm on TikTok, mm -hmm. Instagram, all the things I've even added Twitch recently just to test that out Look at and you. It's all from one stream. And I'm like, and vertical. Mm -hmm. So I just, I think it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think the multi streaming thing is, is becoming even more powerful with some of these new, the API is changing and, and some yeah. things getting unlocked. So, mm -hmm. so when it comes to, so talk to me I mean, a little sorry, bit about. I think you had a question in there from someone that says Facebook user. Oh yeah, I do. I do. I do. Okay. So this question is interesting. So if you do a short form interview, highlighting a guest comment, how do you insert yourself? So people know who you and your channel are. I think what they're saying is sort of like you're doing an interview, right? So you're highlighting this person that you have mm -hmm. on. It is a shorter video, right? So how do you maybe make time to make sure that you're still showcasing yourself as well? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, and, and you might have to kind of improvise a little bit about that question. So I recently saw, I think I saw a video with Brock Johnson where he is doing a new like podcast with um, uh, one, of the, one of the brands or what have you. And what I saw was that it was happening vertical and you saw her, the person he was interviewing first for a couple seconds. And then it immediately went to the, the two of them up top, you know, like one, one to one. And even though he was interviewing her, they made sure within a few seconds that you saw, oh, this is an interview between the two of us. So I feel like that if you're going to interview somebody and highlight somebody and you want to make sure people know that this is your channel and all that, that in your editing, you've got to make sure that like maybe like um, she or he or whomever you're interviewing is still talking. Like you can still hear the audio of them, but then you just start flashing periodically. That's you and them on the screen, mm -hmm. um, kind of like the overlay situation. Um, because if, if it's a really good clip that you really want to show of this person talking, um, then it's definitely worth the investment, the time of the, kind of the edit with the overlay. Yeah. And when you say edit with the overlay, are you, so I see this a lot and I, I, I kind of love it where it's like that person talking, but then there's like you <laughs> sort of mm -hmm. like doing something or exactly. kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, like that little outline of you, right? Like yeah. kind of over like on top. It's like us here right now. I'm on mm -hmm. main screen and you're smaller, but you still mm -hmm. know that you're here. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that. I love that post edit tip that you just gave for that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I I think it's, I think it's a great point though, because when you do have a guest on, they're going to have these moments of gold that they're going to share and, you know, you want to highlight them because that's part of, you know, the, you know, showcasing what they're doing and the value they're bringing to your channel. But at the same time, you do kind of want people to know it's it's you that brought them on and it is your yeah. channel. So that is a good question. I I um I was like kind of thinking it could go that I was thinking about that question because I was like at first I wasn't exactly sure what they meant, but I think you actually knew exactly what they were referring mm-hmm. to when they said that. So that was great. Um let's see. So I um was going to have you talk about so when it comes to you know using these these short videos in your strategies. Do you believe that there's a perfect mix of short versus long video when it comes to kind of the strategy that you're building? Um, I don't think there's a perfect mix. I I definitely think that um, a company or person has to figure out what can they realistically do. You know, like one of my focuses right now is to grow my YouTube channel. But I'm like, okay, like how much time can I really put towards scripting and editing and all the things for the channel realistically, consistently uh, versus how many shorts can I actually do to get me to my desired result? So as we were like contemplating this, I was like, okay, okay, long term, I want to grow my YouTube channel. Short term, short form video is helping me grow my audience, grow my list and helping us, you know, increase our sales. So I had to go, okay, what first of all, what can I realistically do? And I realistically can do two YouTube videos a week. One is my podcast, and then one is a teaching one. I'm like, okay, because the podcast is happening no matter what. Um, then I said, realistically, what can I do shorts wise, and what is actually getting me my desired result community, conversion, you know, sale, or what have you? So I think that a person just has to. Be honest with themselves. Like if you're doing nothing right now, you can't go from nothing to 20. It's just, you just, it's not going to work for long term. You know, I think it's important for you to start off with, okay, let me start with what if I did one long video a week and then I'm doing one short a week and then, and then you can continue to add, add things to it. So a lot of my clients, they're like, I'm going to do four TikTok videos a day. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're not even doing one right now. You know, how are you going to do four a day? You know, whatever. So I'm like, let's focus on one video a week. Once you get into that rhythm, then you can go to two videos a week and then three. And then you'll see where you, you know, where your attention is, what you can, re- what you can realistically do. Hmm. Okay. I love that. I love, I love that you gave everybody the permission to mm-hmm. figure out what they can actually realistically do. So that yeah. is key. Um, and I think that, you know, some of it has to do with, you know, ideas and mm-hmm. just being able to even plan and knowing, cause you know, I always tell everybody, don't just start trying to create content without a plan, right. Or at least a list of ideas or something, because you're going to stress yourself out and you're always going to be like, okay, I'm supposed to make a video today. And I have no idea what it's going to be about, but you, so I, um, definitely spent some time on your website, which mm-hmm. by the way, everybody. Kenya's website is awesome. It is literally like a library of amazing resources. So you're going to need to make sure you go there. But there is definitely a really great resource that you have um, that is called 75 Hooks for Short Video. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think that – why don't you talk to us about this free um, PDF that you have that is for people and and who is it for? And just tell us a little bit about what's in it because it's probably a really good resource to help people um, get these, you know, more, create more content out there. So talk to us a little bit about this resource that you have for everybody. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So we, um, because we teach our clients how to create short video marketing to get in front of the target customer, you know, get them on their email list and sell. We also like to teach people that like, you know, People aren't just going to do what you want to do because you want them to. They're not just going to watch a video because you want them to. They're going to watch your video because something in your video made them stop to watch it. We call that stopping the scroll because when people log on to social media, they're not logging on for us. They're logging on for them to experience whatever it is they're coming to experience. And typically it's some form of entertainment. And we as marketers, business owners, we are the commercial to their entertainment. So they're on there scrolling to get what it is that they came to get. And we are creating content to try to get in front of them to stop them from scrolling so that they will, you know, do what we want them to do. So when someone lands on you, 
you don't have multiple seconds to capture their attention. You literally have 1.5 seconds before someone scrolls away. Like think about your own behavior. When you are on social, you scroll until you see something that you want to see, right? And so when you have a hook, a hook is basically the the thing that happens or that is said or text on screen that gets a person to stop and want to watch the video. So like think about one of the last short videos that you saw. Oftentimes you either saw the person doing something immediately in the video Two, you either saw some text on screen that made you stop and or they actually said something within the first one second that captured your attention. And so with our 75 free hooks, we're giving you here's 75 things you can do. You can choose one, not 75 in your short videos to get people to stop and watch your content. Nice. Okay. Super duper love that because, you know, again, you don't want to just create videos, just to create videos. You want to actually get them and get their attention. So definitely sounds like an absolutely incredible, incredible resource for everybody. So I did put a link. If you're watching on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel, you are going to see that link that I just posted in the comments, but you can also just go to kenyakelly.com forward slash 75 hooks to go find that. Now, Again, don't do it right this second, right? Stay here, stay here, or, or, or multitask, open up another window. But again, keniakelly.com, there's so many great resources she's got over here. I mean, she's got templates. She's got all these things. She's got stuff about helping you monetize your mm -hmm. TikTok, which, you know, making money. I, people who say it's not about the money. It, it's a lot. It's a little bit about the money, but some, yeah, it it's is. a lot about the money because, you know, come on. So um, but I definitely think that it's it's great. So you're actually helping people turn some of this, you know, use some of this to make money and in, into a business. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenya, I also want to make sure that everybody also knows because you also have a course that you mm -hmm. have out there right now. And that course is available only for a limited time. And and ironically, not on purpose, I didn't know this until right before the show, but that course, the enrollment for that course closes today. Is that yes. right? So yes, do does. me a favor, just tell us a little bit about your course so that everybody can hear about it if it's something that sounds like it's for them. Um, again, I know this isn't like a pitch fest or anything, but the fact that you said it was closing today, I'm like, well, yes. we got to make sure everybody knows about that for sure. So yes. tell us a little bit about this opportunity that they have to learn more from you. For sure. Thanks for letting me, guys. Um, so basically, we have a course. It's called Vertical Video Mastery. Uh, and there's two parts. There is the digital course version part. And then there's the live group coaching with me part. And basically what we do is we do typically take in about 30, 25 to 30 people. And we are teaching you how to use Instagram Reels and TikTok marketing to reach your audience and then sell your products and services. Uh, because the average business owner, what we want to do is we want to make money. And the way that we make money is selling to people. So we are the first part we're going to teach you is how to use basically all the features on the inside of Instagram Reels or TikTok, whichever one you want to learn when you're inside the course. Then we're going to teach you how to actually get people off of the platform onto your email list because we don't focus on you selling directly on social media because social media doesn't even want that. OK, so we focus on how to get them off of social onto your email and then how to use your email to actually convert them into pay customers. And all of that is pre-recorded into the course. Um, but then we do two months It's basically eight weeks of live coaching. So you're watching the videos, you're implementing the videos. And then every single week you're coming on our group call with about 20 or 30 people and you're asking your questions. I'm giving you all the, the latest updates, teaching you my strategies. And then, of course, we have a community over on Facebook where you're able to ask questions every single day. So it's really like a, an opportunity to be able to not only learn short video marketing, but learn the art of conversion from short form video marketing in a group form setting. And it's live. Mm, okay. So I love that you said conversion because that's the key word here. Very, very strategic. So super cool. So like I said, make sure that you guys check that out. It is closing today. Um, I'm sure that, you know, Kenya's got all kinds of ways for you to ask questions if you need <laughs> to learn more about that. Um, but good luck with the rest of your, your launch on that, Kenya. Thank so, you. okay. So when it comes to the short form, if you guys were joining us here later in the show, we definitely talked today, we were talking all about why you should be considering or why everyone needs a short 
form video strategy. And Kenya broke it down for us about why short form video is important. She gave, she talked about how it's, you know, everybody's attention spans are short. Everybody's on their phones and all the things, but then also opportunities to repurpose some of your current content into some of these shorts as well, short form videos. But really a lot of it had to do with aligning people and driving people into a direction. So, you know, kind of understanding what your goals are and the goal oriented, you know, having a goal oriented approach to everything so that you can use these short form videos and you can use StreamYard to create them now with the StreamYard, um, you know, vertical video studio, as well as vertical streaming and all the things. And so you don't really need new tools, but you do need to have a path and you do need to have a little bit of, you know, some goals. And, and these videos can actually drive people in the direction you want to take them. So we talked about all that. So if you missed it, make sure you go check out the rest of the replay. But Kenya, before um, we kind of close out today, was there anything else that you wanted to cover or make sure that you that people knew about this strategy that you were talking about today? Yeah. So the the number one thing I want people to know is that it's really important to get started. You know, we all have, I mean, some people are come, come, like concerned about a TikTok ban. And listen, like there, we don't, as a US, we don't really ban things. We typically want money. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. But outside of TikTok, this is huge for Instagram Reels. LinkedIn just launched Shorts. Facebook Reels is out. YouTube Shorts is out. And as a business or a creator, it's really important to know that like short form video isn't going anywhere. It's not about just dancing trends and music and all that type of stuff. This is really like the new way of marketing. And those people who like, because you're watching the content, you may not, not just be posting, like your company may not have an actual strategy on how to post, but it is really important that you guys start creating content or you learn or hire people like me uh, to come in and teach your video marketing team how to create short form video because it's not going anywhere. Like people have way more time to watch 15 of your one minute videos than they are sitting down and watching a long 15 minute video. They are watching long form videos. That's not, not saying that they're not, but they're watching way more shorts than they are long and they can consume you and your content a lot faster and make a buying decision a lot faster if you're using shorts. Mm, I love, I love that. Not so shorts are not going anywhere. You guys heard what she said and, and they are new short form video. Mm -hmm. It's, it's responding to the user behavior. And so <laughs> I always say when these, when these platforms come up with a new feature or a new thing, it's usually based on data and research. And if they're creating this opportunity for you, then it is something that you need to be trying to take, you know, use and take advantage of because they're creating, they're giving you this opportunity for a reason. They mm -hmm. they want people to use their, their, their application. YouTube wants people on their application. Instagram wants people on their application. And so yeah. while it does feel like sometimes they're stealing ideas from other platforms, they're doing it because it's working. So why not get your piece of this puzzle, this pie, and, yep. and you know make sure you're part of this as well. So I love that you mentioned that, that it's not going away because I think you're right. I think it's still so, still so new and it's mm -hmm. still really great. So we do have a couple questions if you've got a few minutes, Kenya, yeah, sure. to, to answer them. For, for, so Creator Classroom is back. So <laughs> I'm sure Joanne will get you unbanned, uh, Creator Classroom, for sure. But she was saying that she wanted the clarification around – when you're talking about short video is she says, are we just talking vertical video or horizontal video or both, you know? So maybe if you could kind of just clarify a little bit about, about that. Uh, well, short video by definition is just short video one minute, but what like 99% of what short video is, is vertical. So you can do short horizontal, but you're probably going to get a better experience if it is short vertical. Now, I will say that TikTok is putting a lot of emphasis on um, creators creating longer video horizontal. So that's coming, but it's not the main behavior. So I would say that if you're going to do the short horizontal, start putting that on TikTok because they really love it, especially if it's longer than one minute. But most people are watching short vertically. Mm, interesting. Okay. So I didn't know that about, about the TikTok and the horizontal. See? Mm -hmm. Man. I feel like we might yeah. have to have a round two or something with you back on the show. <laughs> uh, let's see. So uh, also somebody over in our uh, Facebook group said, 
best AI editing tools for creating shorts from long videos. Do you have any tools that you love that are out there oh, that yeah. help, help make this happen? Uh-huh. So my number one obsession is Opus.pro. Like, I mean, hands down, I'm sure there's other tools, but I love Opus.pro. One, it's probably the most affordable of all of them, you know, and it's just super easy. Like last night, right before I logged off, I had recorded a YouTube video, uploaded it into Opus.pro, and I just went about my way, checked my email this morning and said, your clips are ready. And so then I've got 15 clips that they have um, chopped it up to, they've added uh, text to it. I can add B-roll to it all on the inside of the platform. Ooh, I, you know, I've seen a lot about Opus, but I haven't, I've not really honestly dabbled mm -hmm. in it to be totally honest with you, but that might've been the perfect little like yeah. mentions that I needed. That sounds fun. I like, I like apps. I like stuff like that. I know, um, there's Opus, was it, is it Opus Clip and then Opus Pro is the pro version of it? Is it the same? I think it was the same. I think it's yeah. the Opus Clips, but their website is Opus.pro. Got it. Okay, cool. Thank you for that clarification. So uh, Marianne says, vertical videos are also a great way to partner and collaborate with brands. So yeah. Okay. Very mm -hmm. cool. Love that. Love that for sure. So I did see a couple of um, app suggestions or feature suggestions as well in the comments. So I just want to remind everybody, one of the best ways that you can get those um you know, thoughts heard is to post about them in our Facebook community. So mm -hmm. if you just go over to Facebook, make sure that you've searched StreamYard community, you will find it over there. Uh, and then of course, you know, there's always our contact page. You can always submit your ideas by just simply filling out the form over on the StreamYard website on the contact page for mm -hmm. sure too. So, well, Kenya, this was a ton of fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to, I like this view better there. I really oh, yeah. appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today. If you guys, if you missed the show today, you missed a ton of great information from Kenya. She helped us learn about, you know, short videos and why we need to have a short video strategy. And then of course, mm -hmm. scroll up in the comments, you'll see some comments where you have an opportunity to get some free resources from Kenya. But also mm -hmm. if you want to learn more from her, she's got an amazing, uh, uh, program today that actually is, is closing today. So make sure that you enroll in that if that is something that you're ready to take to the next step, because it is closing today and it's not there forever. So make sure you take right. a, a good opportunity in that. Well, thank you so much again for coming on the show today, Kenya. I know that you are a very busy person and you have a lot going on, including the middle of this launch. So I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come hang out with us and, and share your wisdom with our audience today. Tell us also where you want people to come learn more from you and hang out with you. Yes, yeah, so I would love it if you guys would come and follow my channel on YouTube. It's Kenya Kelly on YouTube. Uh, but also I am on Instagram, on TikTok, LinkedIn. I post to all the places, not as much on LinkedIn. I'm working on it. But I post twice a week on YouTube and I'm always on Instagram and TikTok at Kenya Kelly. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. All right. Well, you all heard it from her. So you know where to go find out and hang out with her. So Kenya, thank you so, so much. If you want to hang out in the studio real quick, I'll chat with you after the show for a few minutes, but I appreciate you coming on again today. Thank so thank you. you so much. Well, there you have it, everybody. Oh, I've been talking about Kenya for a few weeks now. I used her as an example a while back, a few weeks ago, talked about how she's doing this amazing job with these vertical streams and vertical content. But now you actually got to have, if you haven't seen Kenya before, now I hope that you're as big a fan as I am because she is absolutely incredible. She has so much, she provides so much wisdom and she provides so much value in her content. So make sure you are hanging out with her, like she said, checking her out, subscribe to her YouTube channel, all those things, because she's got so much for you to learn. And as you all heard today, she knows her stuff. So she's pretty great. So thank you all for being here today. I noticed that some of you have some follow-up questions. If you do, I'll just go post them over in that StreamYard community and we will get the uh, answers to your questions if we didn't get to it today. So other than that, you know where to find us. Make sure you're hanging out with us over here on the YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed because there's always all kinds of great videos being posted all the time, every week, new stuff coming. And there's probably new news coming because there's new news about StreamYard lately. And I know nothing more than that. So make sure you stay tuned so you can uh, learn all the new things coming up. So all right, everybody, have a great day. I'll see you next time. See ya.